This is the last part where I show you how to set up these trails in order to simulate Smoke and Houdini. And if you're interested in the full course, go to parameter3.com and you can find it there. Specifically in this lesson, we're gonna look how you can offset your missiles so they start at different frames. And then we dive deep into how you can turn your missiles up, down, left or right with yawn pitch attributes. All right, jumping back in here, I'm gonna change our voxel size to 0 0.08, just so things will simulate just a little bit faster as we start to alter our trails. Coming back up here to our add node, let's just visualize our base trail with these lines. I'm gonna pin our viewport right here by just clicking that one. So now wherever I navigate, it'll pin to that specific output. And then if we dive into our animated missiles node in here, I'm gonna drop down a point wrangle. And the first thing what we wanna do is create a way to randomly start our missiles so they don't all start on frame 1001. This will just add a little bit more variety and using the name attribute, we can do that. So first I'm gonna type some code. I'm gonna say int hash. And a hash is essentially just a random integer number. So I can generate a random s hash with this function, random s hash, by passing in the s at name attribute, the string name attribute. So then if I type in a test, we can visualize there's a test integer attribute on our data and we see that it's just this random long huge number. So I'm going to take that random long huge number and mod it by like 10,001. This way it gives us a more tenable number, something that's a little bit smaller that works usually better with our random function anyway. So now if I do a float at test equals rand and then I'll pass in our hash plus some random number which will just be a seed that you could change with another parameter. We're going to then fit this, and since the random function uh, returns a number from zero to one, we can put it into a fit zero one, and then I'll fit it from 1001 to 1010, and then shove it in another function called floor, which will then floor it down to um, the bottom number on the decimal point. So. If it was 1008.9, it would go down to 1008.0. So I've adjusted the seed there, and now let's jump back in here. And actually, nothing's happened because we actually have to jump into our simulation and change how we're sourcing the particles. So let's delete that impulse activation expression, and now we can just change this to 1. So Currently, nothing's being sourced properly because we've only set up our test attribute here. So now what we want to do is just call this float value. And if our frame in Houdini does not equal that value, remove the point. So then that point will only source at the given frame number, the random frame number that we've um, Specified. Now let's jump in here and see what's going on. Uh, I think honestly we just need to go back over to our effects smoke trails because right now currently our points are being sourced properly. We do see that it is only generating four points. Okay, so yeah, that is working. If we go back to our smoke trails, let's just reset this simulation we should see it it's still not working properly let's try and debug and see what's going on here so if we go to our extract centroid we can hide all the other attributes okay it's not necessarily pulling in those points as we would like so let's dive back into our animate missiles node here let's examine the simmed points and we see that they're actually not starting at frame 1001 which is it's expecting that. So let's see how we can solve this problem. So jump over to your start points node and let's actually connect this before the random start so it never gets cold. So then that way the transform pieces node always has a specific point to reference to then copy the missile geometry onto. 
So now if we jump back into our effect smokes trails and reset the simulation, we see that now the trails are updating as we would expect. Now let's jump out of this, pin our viewport, jump and animate missiles into the DOP network. Now back into our trails pop net, let's drop down a pop wrangle. So if we move this in here and put it before the grab end B, we can call it a adjust arc of missile. Now this part of the course, we're gonna have a lot more code and I'm gonna walk you through it. Um, but this is just one approach. You could technically make other custom trajectories if you wanted to, but this is kind of a fun way to learn a little bit of VEX and learn a little bit more about pops. So let's dive in. I'm going to set the play bar back to like 1004 and let's zoom in on our missile trajectory. We see that we have just a missile following this path that has been generated based on its velocity. So what we're gonna do here is delineate a pitch and a yaw for our missiles. Um, that's a fancy way of saying our pitch is going to be controlling our up and down, like the way the missile would either point up or down with its nose, or the yaw, which would turn the missile right or left based on the orientation of its nose. And that will then give us the ability to add twists and turns, essentially, with our missiles. So let's dive into the code here. All right, so we're going to start by creating a vector attribute that's going to be pointing in the direction of the missile. So we'll call that vector z. And it will be equal to the normalized uh, velocity. So v at v is the velocity, and we're going to normalize that so that just gets us a direction vector. And now we need to create an up vector. So we'll say vector up is equal to essentially set it in the negative y direction. So x, y, and z are the three values passed into this parameter, but I'm setting it to negative 0.9999, which is essentially one. This way, um, it just makes it so it's slightly off the direction of negative one. I'm going to then create a vector side. I'm going to cross the Z direction and the up direction, which will then give us the perpendicular vector called the side vector. I'll make sure that that side is normalized. And then we need to revert back by using the side and Z and create a perfect up vector now by crossing the result of side and z. It may not make total sense, and that's okay. It takes a while to comprehend how vectors and vector math works. So jumping ahead, let's go to normalize our up vector just to make sure that's all set and proper. And now we're gonna move on to the yaw portion of our missile trajectory. Okay, so let's delineate a vector axis and for this axis let's call it the up axis and now let's create a float called angle because we want it to rotate about a certain angle and we can set that equal to for right now just a a random number so right now we see that we have an ID on our points so we can actually reference that by saying int at ID plus some random seed so right now our angle, our float angle attribute here, or our variable, is a random number from zero to one. So we can take that and fit zero, one, and then maybe delineate it based on an angle of degrees. For right now, we could just set that to any range from three to seven degrees. Let's create an attribute called a, well, let's use a function called quaternion. And this represents um, essentially a quaternion, it, it, it's really hard to explain, but it basically takes in an angle and an axis, and it's able to convert that angle in which you wanna rotate things and a certain axis, and it converts it to a 3D rotational matrix. Now real quick, I'm gonna convert my angle that we delineated in terms of degrees I'm going to convert it to radians because the 
quaternion is taking in radians, I'll make a vector 4 called quat and set it equal to that. And now I'll create a matrix 3, and we'll call it just m, and I'll set it equal to q convert, which is another function that takes our quaternion and converts it into a 3D rotational matrix. Now, leveraging that matrix, we can take our z direction and multiply it by the matrix. So when that z is multiplied, that means it will alter the direction of the velocity because we're going to essentially rewrite the z into our velocity. So we'll declare a new vector called new v. We'll times that normalized direction z by the speed, and we'll set up a speed attribute, which is the magnitude or the length of the vector v. And so then at the very end here, we'll say, hey, your velocity, we are going to linearly interpolate it. So there's a lerp function. We're going to basically blend the two. So our current velocity is v at v. We're going to blend that with our newly created new v based on a blend value. And now let's set up a blend value. Our blend could be maybe just uh, we'll fit the, the age. So if we look here at our pop solver, we have an age attribute, which delineates how old the particle is in terms of seconds. So we'll say, hey, our age from zero to, I'm gonna do 1.0 divided by 24, which essentially is um, our frames per second, 24 frames per second. So one unit of time, um, which is a frame, so I'm going to say 10 frames times our unit of time. So we're going to fit our age from 0 to 10 frames. Once our, our particle is 10 frames long, you're going to now blend to our new velocity. So if we zoom out here, we can start to see that after about 10 frames, I'll zoom out here and I'll uncheck the, the wrangle just so we can see. So this is our normal arc. And now if we turn this on, after about 10 frames, it now bends into this new direction. And after 10 frames, that age blend has made it so three to seven degrees based on its random angle, it's turning. Now that we've got that going, I'm just gonna delineate this as final velocity settings. And now we can move on to our pitch force, which is the force that'll basically point the rocket up or down. So what we can do is just grab all of that, what we did for the yaw force, copy it over. And since these attributes are already declared, we actually don't need to declare access as vector again, but we can just change it to side. And then again, we don't need the float in front of angle. We could maybe change the random seed and change the angle to maybe three to 10. Get rid of vector four in front of the qua and we'll get rid of matrix three in front of the m just so our code works and again this works we're multiplying after the yaw the pitch and it feeds into our final velocity so if we take a look if i come out here we see that our trajectory goes up now it goes up because after about 10 frames it just continues to push that angle upwards and upwards. And we don't necessarily want that because then our particles are never gonna come down. So we do need gravity to affect them. So what we could do is add an extra variable in here. We could just times our angle by another um, fit of the age attribute, but this time, Perhaps we change this to maybe 20 frames. And if we play that, again, nothing happened. And that's because we actually have to, we have to reverse the one and zero. So now if we do that, we see that it curves and it pitches down now. And I'll change that from five to 20 frames. Let me extend my play bar here. And now we're getting some really cool twisty and turny 
trajectories. There we go. Just kind of this natural, well, I guess missiles aren't really natural, but this cool trajectory that happens all from a random yaw and pitch force. And you can, you can change these values. You could even enter an extra float parameter here if you wanted to change the seed on this one, add it there, click the execute button down here, and we could change the seed and we see that the trajectories go other places. And for the sake of time, you can tweak your trajectories as you want, but I'm just gonna show you my final settings that I came to, which I felt like looked good. And here they are. And now we'll move right along. Okay, so plane to the end, we'll jump out of here, jump over to our effect smoke trails. And now we can just go and flip book our simulation and we'll view it in our next lesson. All right, I hope you enjoyed these three lessons on how to get started with your cool smoke trails in Houdini. And if you wanna take your skills a step further and you're interested in learning how to actually simulate the smoke and make it look really cool, head over to parameter3.com and check it out.